Some stories are too good not to be true, so this one has to be true. Years ago, a bagpiper who played at weddings and funerals and parties was asked by a funeral director to play at a graveside service for a homeless man. The man had no family or friends, so the service was to be at a pauper cemetery in the Kentucky backcountry. I'll let the bagpiper tell the story. This is what he said. I was not familiar with the backwoods, so I got lost, and being a typical man, I didn't stop to ask for directions. What? I finally arrived an hour late. The funeral director had evidently gone. The hearse was nowhere in sight. There were only the grave diggers and crew left, and they were eating lunch. I felt badly and apologized to the man for being so late. They didn't say anything, just ate their sandwiches. I went to the graveside and I looked down. The vault lid was already in place. I didn't know what else to do, so I started to play. The workers put down their lunches and began to gather around. I played my heart and soul out for this homeless man. No friends and family, but at least he had us. I played like I'd never played before for this man. And as I played Amazing Grace, the workers began to weep. They wept. I wept. We all wept together. When I finished playing, I packed up my bagpipes and started for my car. My head hung low, but my heart was full. As I opened the door to my car, I heard one of the workers say, you know, I never seen nothing like that before. And I've been putting in septic tanks for 20 years. <laughs> well, the first time I heard this, I laughed for 30 seconds at the thought of a man playing his heart out for a septic tank. I also laughed because like that piper, I've been lost myself more times than I care to admit. Back before GPS saved my life, back before every man, woman, and cat owned a cell phone, my wife and I would fly into a strange city, rent a car, buy a map, and try to get from A to B without going past L, Q, X, and M. There are a few major cities you could name where I have not been hopelessly lost. I will fold this now very carefully, okay? It'll take you an hour and a half. I have been lost in malls, in hospitals, in parking lots. One time I couldn't find my way in Dallas and finally realized I was staring at a map of Pittsburgh. Sometimes I would get so desperate I'd ask complete strangers for help or pull into a service station. I may be the only man in history to ask for directions. My friend James tells me of the time he was lost in France. His GPS was malfunctioning, his knuckles were white, and suddenly he saw a beautiful sign at an intersection, directions ahead. The lost had been found. I think we need more of those kind of signs because if I've learned anything while being lost, I've learned that the road we take determines where we end up. Ha! Huh. So we'd best find the right one. The Bible tells us there are two roads when it comes to our eternal destination. One leads to destruction and the other to life. Years ago, I came to a crossroads and chose the road that led to the cross. The central point in human history is the cross. That's where the savior of the world, the one who came to seek and to save that which was lost, showed me the way home. It wasn't through a religion, but a relationship with a God of grace, of love, of mercy. There was no bagpiper at that crossroads. I'd have known, trust me. But somehow I heard the song Amazing Grace loud and clear. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, ransomed me, and like a flood, his mercy rings. Unending love, amazing grace. If you've chosen that road, celebrate. If you haven't come along yet, it's a grand adventure. Throw your bagpipes in the back seat, and let's go. Ah! I got it! <laughs>